Hey, this is Derek, and I'm here with Megan Tibbetts, who's an incredible, Hi. who's an incredible artist, a kind of an unusual mashup artist of she plays the harp, she plays I think many different instruments, right? Harp is not your only thing. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um and, uh -huh. and you're into R and B music, which doesn't traditionally go with the harp. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i love this and in fact it was really fun because i think when we first got introduced to each other by um new york times bestseller bob goff who's a good friend of yours um you had just been in a tiktok video with uh with john the gospel artist um trying to trying to remember jonathan mcreynolds name, but... Oh, Jonathan. Well, Jonathan McReynolds. And there was another one as well. Oh, um, Fred Hammond. Yeah. Fred Hammond. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know why I was thinking, John. Fred Hammond. Yes. And, um, and they were both like, I remember seeing the Fred Hammond one. And he's sitting there watching you cover one of his <gasps> gospel songs on the Crazy. harp. And he's singing along with it. How cool Mine is that? Mine is blown. That was insane. <laughs> that was literally yeah. insane. Yeah. So wow. congratulations on all that, Megan. It's so cool. Thank you. To see. Thank you so and much. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me, um, I guess let's, let's start with Bob Goff because you've been doing some of Bob's retreats here recently. Yes. Um, so, so just tell me how you guys met, what you're doing with him. Yes. Um, I am a huge fan of Bob Goff. I have been a huge fan for, probably as long as I've been in LA. So nine or 10 years, I remember he, it was the mm -hmm. first book I bought from Barnes and Noble as a, as a out of college, poor, trying to live in LA person. I thought, I don't know what to buy, but I have money for one book. This book looks <laughs> cute, has balloons on the front. Let's buy it. And then I would sit in my break room at the fireman's credit union where I worked at as an assistant. And I would read mm -hmm. Bob Goff's book and just was so inspired to live a more vibrant and exciting and purposeful life. And um, soon after that, he came to my church called Oasis in LA. And mm -hmm. I fanned out so hard. Um, <laughs> Bob, I love you. And um, we, uh, I was singing that day at church and we just connected and we, we became friends. And then some months later, I remember getting an email from from him. And I saw it in my inbox. I thought, no, this could not be right. And I opened it and he wanted me to come and play the harp at one of his events. And I lost my mind because I was his number one fan. Um, yeah. And then we just built this sweet relationship um, and then uh, became friends with Maria. And then um, he, he got the, he bought the retreat center outside of San Diego. And I started playing it regularly at those events. And it is, it has been the joy of my life. I have been doing that mm. for maybe um, a year and a half or so now, every couple months, he'll, he'll do his retreats and um, I get to come play at some of them. And then we went on a bus tour together with Maria and Bob and our friend Taylor oh, cool. and toured um, the South and the, a little bit of uh, around the U S a bit. And it was the time of my life. So Bob has become a great friend. Um, yes. And he's the reason why I know you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He introduced us to each other. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. So, and then I, so then I kind of started following you on social media and find out that really that your popularity really is coming mainly through social media, which I find interesting because this is kind of the new way right? Like, mm -hmm. like you've had several posts kind of go viral or semi viral on TikTok. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is the dream I think a lot of artists want now is like, you'd much rather have, you know, a, a hit on TikTok <laughs> than say radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, both would be ideal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's awesome to see how you're just kind of organically growing. Mm. And so from a music, like I kind of geek out on music business stuff. And so to see that happening organically is really a healthy sign. So yeah, just congratulations Thank you. on that. That's yeah. really encouraging. It's been a crazy journey, especially even just um, 
you know, growing up thinking, knowing and valuing humility and then having now the latest way to do anything with your career if you're in music is to mm-hmm. promote yourself and do mm-hmm. and put yourself out there and do everything that I <laughs> was taught was the opposite yeah. of what I am, you know, right. um, you know, trying to do. So it's been an interesting balance and, and actually like a really tricky thing to hold um, and not uh, play the comparison game and not get on there and get discouraged about what everyone else is doing and their highlight mm-hmm. reels. And then, um, yeah. you know, it's been, it's, it's a hard balance to, to know that I need this social media platform, but to know that it's a very tricky place to space to hold well and still maintain mm-hmm. my identity and who the Lord has made me to do and the mess who he has made me to be and the message he has created me to, um, to communicate without getting mm-hmm. wrapped up in all the other stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So do you think about that much? I mean, like, you know, I, I, you know, some artists just like, I don't care. I'm just me and I'm just posting stuff and whatever. Some people are very methodical and thinking I've got a content calendar and things like that. So how do, how do you think of that? How do you think of your social media game? Do you have yeah. a, a plan? Is there a master plan or not really? You just kind of do you or what? Yeah, I try to, um, one, it takes intentionality, but two, I always try for my mental health and for the health of the people that are following me. I understand that these are actually people that the Lord has entrusted me with. They're not just, mm-hmm. oh, a bunch of numbers. This looks cool. It's actually, mm-hmm. oh, the numbers hold weight because I need to be thinking about how does God want me to serve these people? Because that's why he's giving them to me so that right. so that he can so that I can, he can, we can partner and deliver a message of encouragement and hope. And this actually, I try not to make my Instagram and places about me because that's where it gets messy. So I want it to be, you know, uh, an encouragement and, um, uplifting so that if someone comes across my page, they actually are, are joining in the mission that I'm trying to do is just help people move forward out of their fear and become the fullness of who they were made to be. And so, um, yes, it takes, it takes vision to constantly be like, Instagram is not, is not the king of life. Um, (laughs) right. Right. God is the king of life and, (laughs) um, of my life. And so always placing things in their proper place or else it gets messy, but also being really intentional because there's a strategy behind all of this. Um, you know, there's, there's, um, being consistent. There's, um, what I've found is, uh, a kind of a niche place that is, um, starting to get some, um, viewership with, with the mm-hmm. harp and, um, mm-hmm. yeah. and so figuring out how to, how to use what God has given me and use it well and use it strategically to, to build, um, to build an audience, to get, um, a, a a great message to as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. And who are your inspirations? Like, who do you, who's Mm. on your playlist right now? (laughs) Mm. Who's, who are your kind of deepest inspirations? Yeah. Yes. Um, My writing inspirations have always been, and it it continues to evolve and, and obviously when new artists come out, but John Mayer and Sarah Bareilles are Mm. the artists Mm -hmm. that, if I needed some writing inspiration, I would listen to them and the way mm-hmm. they put their words together is together into stories and painted these gorgeous pictures that, um, that I wanted to portray. And even the simplicity of, um, of their production, not that it's easy, but, but there, it was approachable for me as a listener that started off on guitar and, um, and as, yeah, primarily acoustic guitar driven artist, but now adding in the harp. So they were huge influences. Um, uh, Brooke Frazier, um, mm-hmm. really inspired me and actually helped, um, me f- figure out what direction I could go being a person who loved Jesus, but still wanting to be, um, b- back then in the, um, 
in the mainstream world and not necessarily mm-hmm. just CCM. And since then I've, I've transferred more into CCM because I felt, I felt called there. So, um, yeah, it's been, mm-hmm. it's been quite the journey. Lots of, mm-hmm. lots of artists and inspirations playing into it. Mm-hmm. For the listeners who don't know, CCM is contemporary Christian music, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. just kind of <laughs> little <laughs> good call. Little three letter acronym. We call them TLAs, three little three letter acronyms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I love John Mayer as well. Like just his man, just his stylings. You know, mm-hmm. musical stylings. Just a intuitive. Um, sense of really what people want to hear melodically and stuff yeah. and the other thing too i mean maybe this is maybe this kind of crosses over with your stuff because you know we're often told in the music industry like you have to tour with young instrumentalists and musicians and you know mm-hmm. you have to look young blah 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 mm-hmm. and and john mayer tours with some of the oldest like uh yep. black dudes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're amazing <laughs> yes like, i just, just got goes, to see him at the staple center yeah yeah and he just has the most talented seasoned uh artists and who back him you know like on the planet and it's so refreshing to see like he just bucks the trend of like don't don't pay attention yeah you have advice no right. i want i want slam and music <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yep. yeah so i I love that. Yes. <laughs> so then, so then, um, so then, okay, we talked about Bob Goff also. So we talked, okay, so we talked about music inspiration, but what about other kind of influences in terms of like either poetry or other forms mm. of art that influence you? Okay, we mentioned Bob. Are there yeah. others too that have kind of fed into your life that you kind of draw inspiration from? Yeah, definitely authors like Bob, um, and, uh, Donald Miller. Um, Mm -hmm. I've loved his books. I love Glennon Doyle. Um, Mm -hmm. her books really inspire me to, um, write even outside of music. I also love to Mm -hmm. write, um, written words. So, um, I'm very inspired by her writing. Um, and do you do spoken do you do spoken word stuff or just I don't more? no but I okay. um I write so I'm working on a book. Um, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, that um that has been on my heart for a while. Um and then AW Tozer is um mm-hmm. always going to influence me. He mm-hmm. is full of wisdom and he does not um, sugarcoat any of that stuff. So it's, it's a nice <laughs> little punch in the face when I get to read mm-hmm. A.W. Tozer. He's one of my favorites. Right. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. What about for okay. you? Who inspires you? Oh, that's a good question. I'm a big, well, it's kind of interesting. Well, okay. I would say the most influential book I've ever read was, was the biography of Bonhoeffer, uh, by Eric Metaxas that wow. to read the unabridged version of um, Bonhoeffer's life. Uh, so Bonhoeffer was a German theologian whose dad was a psychologist and kind of um, advisor <laughs> uh, to the Nazi party early, early on, you know, in the rise of Hitler's power. And then his son, um, uh, so I'm trying to remember Bonhoeffer's, everybody just knows him as Bonhoeffer. I don't know why I'm, spacing on mm. on his on his first name so his son uh became a theologian and mm. and became one of uh hitler's most ardent critics and was warning the german church about uh, the rise of hitler and how the church needed to reject hitler's power mm. uh, because that was one of the first things that hitler did was to try and get churches to sign on to say hey if we endorse you know if you endorse the Nazi wow. party and Hitler, we'll leave you alone, <laughs> right? That oh Hitler was goodness. going around trying to get churches to sign that. And wow. uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, so the life of Bonhoeffer is just an amazing, amazing story. Um, mm-hmm. And ultimately, he was killed by Hitler. He was executed, honestly, like wow. I think a couple weeks before the, the war ended. So it's a really oh tragic story. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so I, for me, that's like, I think one of the most influential books. And then I'm just a big sci-fi fan. 
So <laughs> yes, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So the Dune series is kind of interesting because the Dune series, yes. you know, that just came out in movie form. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those those series of books are really amazing and have a lot of parallels, biblical parallels. You know that uh, mm. Frank Herb, uh, Herbert, uh, yes. yeah, uh, borrowed from the Bible. So very anyway. cool. I watched the, sh <laughs> the, the movie, but I'll, I'll need to check out the books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The first three books that there's six books total. The first three wow. are pretty, pretty wild, like amazingly wild and good. And then the second set of books, second three trilogy, you know, second trilogy are like, it's just straight up crazy. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um so where are you like so where who so who is your audience? Because now mm. that you're this kind of mashup, right, between this classical instrument with the harp and you kind of do some R and B and then you do kind yeah. of inspirational Christian music and even now gospel music. Yeah. Like who who listens to you? What do you know about the people who follow you and stuff? Yeah, that's constantly um, evolving and something that I'm really just starting to discover now. And I think in this next season, that's going to be um, important to discover. And I think as I, um, I'm hoping for more uh, live opportunities as mm -hmm. um, even touring with, with uh, bands and artists that I'm, praying and hoping to tour with, uh, will mm -hmm. reveal some of that because TikTok and Instagram, um, it's interesting right now. I have, um, my outside of the U S um, Nigerian, a, a big Nigerian oh, yeah. following, which right. is very cool to me because my fiance is Nigerian. Okay, and yeah. so that's, amazing um to me well and here's here's a, here's an interesting thing because i also have an, a good friend who's nigerian his name is daramola daramola was the producer for the social club misfits he also mm. produces for keisha christina aguilera he's done all oh, kinds wow. of stuff yeah nice. and he's not he's nigerian and he told me that um uh a lot of africans look up to nigerian musicians for kind of what's happening in music. So like Nigerians wow. have always been influential in African culture for like popular music and that wow. kind of thing. So anyway, yeah, Very so that's good. Cool. You have Nigerians following you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and some, yeah. a lot of my comments these days are in French, so I'm not sure where oh, that's coming from. Yeah. Um, but, right. but yeah, I think my, I think, um, 20s and 30s um mm -hmm. are are listening to me i think the mm -hmm. the ethnic diversity is is rather diverse it's di rather diverse of my mm -hmm. audience so yeah. i don't know i don't know who's <laughs> listening well, I, I hope everybody cool wants to listen <laughs> yeah and for those of you who know me and who follow this podcast that like my whole thing is technology and how we can leverage technology for good and and so I see this kind of like in the music industry, we've always kind of had to cater to whatever, you know, is happening in the United States. Right. And traditionally that's been radio. And so now we think about when was the last time any of us turned a radio on? Uh, not very. I mean, for me, it was probably eight, 10 years ago. I uh, <laughs> last time I turned a radio on. And and so now what's awesome, like hearing that from you is you now have global reach, right? With mm. streaming services and everything. And it kind of blows our minds to be thinking about, well, a person in France and Nigeria is, is, is the same view as a person or listen as somebody in the United States. And it's like, now you have new opportunities to go tour, you know, in yeah. different places and like thinking about out of the box ways we can reach more people. I think it's just super exciting. Yeah, it, it is exciting. And it's crazy. When I started this, there was barely YouTube. So I feel like right. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen many different forms of this. Obviously, you have seen even more, you've been mm -hmm. really in the in the trenches with this stuff. And it's, and it's your mm -hmm. passion. But it is wild how quickly things shift. <laughs> I feel like as soon yeah. as I 
like, okay, I'm doing okay on Instagram. Now I just got to upkeep it. Then TikTok shows up. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have to learn a whole new thing. Yeah. But right. then the algorithm is really helpful. And so, yeah, it's, it's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the biggest challenge for artists right now is staying on top of all that, you know, mm -hmm. um, and even exhausting. now as I'm, yeah. And even now as I'm kind of doing my podcast thing, it's like, yeah, what, what is my home platform? I'm not sure I even really mm -hmm. know, you know, yeah. and like, how, where do you spend your time promoting and investing and trying to curate audiences and stuff? So um, but that, that's good that you, you know, you feel like you have somewhat of a handle on it <laughs> right Yeah. Now. I'm just, I'm yeah. um, maybe just getting, getting some, getting there. Yeah. Seeing yeah. what works and seeing what's taking mm -hmm. off and doing more of that. <laughs> yeah. And then what else is bread and butter for you in terms of like live appearances? You know, you've been doing Bob's, uh, retreats. What, what else do you do for live appearances? Where do you play? Yeah. Yeah. I do, um, a lot of churches, um, mm -hmm. and I'm actually trying to, to figure out how to, how to play more live now that mm -hmm. live music is back. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After yeah, a couple I... years of that wasn't an option. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to figure out, um, I'm in the middle of figuring it out. I like to think mm -hmm. that I like to see where I've come from and how the Lord has brought me to this place, but I'm always looking forward to what is next. And I feel like next is, is figuring out those live places because when I was doing mainstream music, you know, you could find your local bar and you could find here and there and I could still play in those places. But, um, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a, a tour spot. So We'll mm -hmm. see how that goes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and just I, and the reason why I'm kind of bringing that up after talking about social media numbers is because most musicians need, need to kind of know how one feeds the other. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's you, you can't like you can have a social media following, but you really won't have much engagement unless you're engaging with people in real life because then mm -hmm. they feel like. Hey, I, I saw you or I just stumbled upon you at say Bob's retreat or something. And then all of a sudden like, wow, I love you. You're amazing. And then like, now yeah. you get the follows on social media and then that leads to engagement on social media. And so it's right. this nice, it's this nice symbiotic thing. You can't have one without the other. And I think right. I feel like, I feel like there's almost like an overemphasis right on the social part the mm -hmm. social media part of it. Yeah. And it's kind of. I, I like it, I've done a and R stuff forever. And when I see that, the, you know, hyped up numbers on the social side, doesn't mean that you can get people out to a show. Right. You know, absolutely. You know? And that's yeah, another, just, so, uh, just yeah. tr tricky part of social media. Like I, I want people to listen to my music, but they're, they're going to be more engaged with my music if they know who I am and they actually right. mm -hmm. like me and choose to like me as a person. And then yeah. if I, if I do a harp song or talk about something that's on my heart or mm -hmm. make a t-shirt, it's all, they want to engage because they like me, not just because if they just like mm -hmm. the harp, then they're not going to yeah. want my recorded song that's coming out this at the end of this month because it doesn't have right. harp on it. So, right. Well, and you bring it, this is an excellent point because I feel like this is the new, the new, uh, I guess definition of what it means to be an artist now mm -hmm. is it's, it's the whole self, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can have your latest single and things, but there's, you know, 60,000 tracks dropping a day on exactly. digital music services, you know, and it's so funny because um, I remember KJ52, the the rapper has, has talked about like, you know, he would have, he would have a, you know, he would drop a new song or something or album. And then somebody would say, oh man, I love that song, you know, that's 20 years old. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I just <laughs> dropped a new mm. album. And like right. nobody cares, nobody cares right. right? But I think what's most important is like people are following you and want to be inspired by you, you know, mm. and that's that's the name of the game now. So whatever yeah. that form takes, whether listening to a track 
or they, you know, buy your book or they, you know, hit a like on Instagram, whatever. Right. I mean, I, I see that as all just healthy expressions of the give and take between the artist and the fan. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and I want, mm -hmm. I just, I feel like my message to artists too is, is it's less about what you're making and it's more about who you are. And so mm -hmm. we get to be entrusted with a message, but really it's God entrusting us when we walk in a room, that's, that's God in that room now um, within mm -hmm. us. And so, yeah, I think it's important for us to um, really connect as human beings. Yeah. Right. And I mean, that's so important now because like, as we were talking earlier, like so mm -hmm. much emphasis is on that social media and like, mm -hmm. and even like, I, I've been processing this a lot recently, <laughs> like, I guess, spiritually speaking mm -hmm. of like, you know, with us being so divided, you know, they, you know, people saying we're divided and I'm like, you know, the antidote to that is seeing people eye to eye in person, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. meeting people in person, you know? And I think that, you know, as an artist, that that is you do that through your live gigs mm -hmm. and being able mm -hmm. to, you know, meet people, give them a hug, shake their hand, yeah. you know, and Absolutely. like that, that's just that's gold in today's mm -hmm. economy, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a bit of a yeah. lost art, but yeah, it's <laughs> very necessary. Yeah, right. Yeah. So have there been any stories that you've, say, you've heard from fans about maybe how you've touched them? Have there been anything mm. that like things that have come back to you where you go, man, that was really cool? Yeah, it's um, I lately on TikTok, it's been cool to see a couple comments have said something like, I don't believe in the God that you're singing about, but something about mm. this music stopped me in my tracks and made me feel peace. Mm. Um, yeah. And that is, I could be done. I could be done today <laughs> because <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, yeah. that, that was just such a meaning, a, a few, a couple comments like that. And it was just so meaningful to me because mm -hmm. that's who, that's who God is. God isn't the religion and the, and the the stuff and the fighting against who's right and who's wrong that sometimes the the, mm -hmm. the word Christian and religion triggers me because mm -hmm. Jesus right. is is so much different than the picture that has been painted by Christians about Christianity and so right. um, the fact that Jesus, could shine through a song that I'm singing that is about him, but it's, it's his heart that he was able to use his music and, and do something peaceful within the heart of a listener that, that, mm -hmm. that didn't know who he was. And so, um, or that maybe had been turned off to Christianity through Christians, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that when we just get it wrong sometimes often, most of the time. Right. <laughs> and right. so, um, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just really, really recently encouraged by that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah we forget that Jesus kind of was kind of the ultimate rebel, you know, that's why they wanted to kill him. Yep. And, and he was loving the unlovables, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes I, f I feel like we, or I guess you could say religious people, right? Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. want to have this box that we, mm -hmm. we put Jesus in and say, this is, this is who he was. And like, um, yeah, I think, I think we'd be surprised if he was here in person. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think about that all the time. I think about when I get to heaven, I'm going to be like, yeah. what, what, wait, that, oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> I think we get so much of it wrong. And yeah. I mean, grace, grace is, yeah. is everything. So yeah, my, my favorite story really from the Bible is the woman at the well, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, Jesus had met this person, a Samaritan who was kind of, you know, 
essentially a rejected group from the Jews of the day of which Jesus was one. And so not only was he crossing essentially a, an ethnic line, but then he was crossing the male female like gender line to reach wow. out to say, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing a taboo here yeah. <laughs> by you know, reaching out to a woman and I'm a yeah. single man, you know, yeah. and we're here alone. We shouldn't be having this conversation, but we're going to have the conversation, mm. you know, and then she was divorced mm. and had other boyfriends mm. and he was, uh, you know, seen as a holy teacher and that mm. was also not okay. <laughs> so like he like crossed so many lines in that interaction on purpose. Yep. Like yep. he was really trying to make people mad yeah. in that exchange. Yes. And, oh my gosh. I love him. And yeah. And, and through that, he expressed the value of women, the value of human life, the value of forgiveness. Um, there's just so many lessons in that just real, yeah, human moment and that story. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's my, that's my favorite really story of the Bible. So, so Absolutely. what's, what's yours? Do you have one? Oh man. I haven't thought about this in a minute. <laughs> um, I love, I love when Jesus is surprising, uh, which mm -hmm. is always. Yeah. And he does not give a care what people think about him. And that's so inspiring to me because I get <laughs> oh, so yeah. trapped in people pleasing and so mm. trapped in what the perception of me might be. Um, and, uh, you know, the fear of being misunderstood or the fear of coming across wrong and cancel culture. You say one mm. thing wrong and you are done. And so yeah, since right. my career is so is so as a musician is so heavily yeah. based on the internet and people yeah. and followings. And I'm like, dang, Jesus is a savage. He He's just like who he is. <laughs> yeah. And he does right, not right. care yeah. if mm -hmm. he is misunderstood. His whole life was misunderstood. I feel like, yeah. I feel like social media could take a tip from him. Even the other day I was, mm -hmm. I was um, just, trying to make sure social media had its rightful place underneath everything else that ma actually matters. Right. <laughs> um, right. Right. In, in the kingdom, in, in life, when I'm at my deathbed, I'm not going to think about how many followers I had. And, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, God, I want to make sure this is in my right in its right place. And then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, is having fall if it is wanting and having followers then bad. And I felt mm -hmm. the Holy spirit speaking to me and saying, Megan, like Jesus speaking to me saying, Megan, I had a ton of followers. That was, mm -hmm. this is what I do. I have followers, mm -hmm. but the thing that's different is I don't put, I don't determine my ministry and my life based on them. I don't change mm -hmm. and, and flow based on my followers. They are following me because I have a message that I'm going to give. And they mm -hmm. follow me because they are receiving this message that I have to give. And so it really took mm -hmm. it in a different light um, for me because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, are my followers going to like this? Is this the right thing to post? What time do I post it? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I can get right. so wrapped up in that yeah. one. Really, the only yeah. reason that I have followers is to get this message that Jesus has for these people. And he reminded me about mm -hmm. that through his life and his like, mm -hmm. he did not ebb and flow based on what would be received well or what would be liked right. or approved popular, of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He would have gotten canceled so fast <laughs> in cancel <laughs> yeah. culture. Yeah. So well, I'm he had inspired. The, he had the ultimate cancellation. I mean, he, he got killed, but yeah, but he's had he the sure biggest did. following in human history. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he transcended cancel culture. So I don't need right. to worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, okay, Megan, so, um, where, so you have some new music that's going to be coming out here pretty soon, yeah. I think, and you, you've hooked up with, um, a group of other artists. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, I have an EP coming out, um, 
The next single from it is dropping at the end of the month on August 26th. So I'm mm -hmm. really excited. This is a song that I wrote actually in a season where I had, I had um, given up music in order to get my identity right. And so mm -hmm. um, I feel like this has been a uh, long in coming, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. working on it for a while and been sitting on it for a while. And, and now I have mm -hmm. partnered with a distribution company um, that's, mm -hmm. that's helping me get my music out. And so I'm really excited mm -hmm. about having uh, a little team around me and um, I really like this these guys at this at this company so we are yeah. um, they're called wings music group and we're distributing uh, they're helping me just get it out there um, because awesome. everything else I've distributed um, on my own um, and then mm -hmm. one song I distributed with a friend uh, Sam Fisher um, but yeah we're gonna give this a go um, I'm excited I would love if um, anyone listening would check it out. It's called Solid Ground. It's uh, dropping at the end of the month. So I'm really looking forward yeah, to it. That's awesome. And then how do we find you on social media? Yeah. So uh, TikTok and Instagram is at Megan Tibbetts, M-E-G-A-N-T-I-B-B-I-T-S. And that's where most of the stuff happens. And then, of course, Spotify and Apple Music, wherever you listen to music, also YouTube, um, uh, Megan Tibbetts. So, yeah. Yeah. And if we want to see you live, you can just go. Do you have a website too? I do, megantibbets.com. And, and can um, we book you there? Do you have a form? Yes, to book yep. There? I have a, a contact page and you can book me there and um, or booking or at megantibbets.com. Or, or come to the Oaks Retreat Center in San Diego. Or come to the San Oaks. Diego. And I'm hoping to play yes. more uh, live, show, live shows as well. And those will be. Um, uh, those I'll post those on my Instagram. So would love to see you guys there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, great to meet you, Megan. Um, yeah, thanks for so being on the make a fun you. Island podcast. Mm -hmm. Love hearing uh, about how you're making a fun Island <laughs> Yay, <laughs> with your yeah. harp. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Derek. Thanks so much for taking the time. <laughs> okay. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.